Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's of Air Ford Transit Mark 8. Uh, it's 2021 and it's got a DPF issue. So looking at this, it looks like it's the newer 2 litre engine, Eco Blue. Um, we're going to get inside and see what's going on. Okay, so we'll get inside start it up. Just 62,000 miles on this. Now they've just bought the van exhaust over limit. So they bought the van and when it was delivered to them, is what they're telling me they paid for it before they seen it and when it was delivered it had this problem and i haven't asked too much questions about the matter but i take it they can't obviously bring it back maybe it was a private sale or whatever uh, all i'm interested in is just trying to resolve the issue for them and some of the stories they've said is obviously they've brought it to a couple of mechanics he said one guy was just scratching his head and they could tell that he didn't really know what he what he was doing so they just took the van back away from him they took it to someone else who put they said uh like a carbon cleaning machine on um, opened one of the pipes and put a tube in there and it sat there for 40 minutes without running uh, but it didn't work the light didn't go off he could he wasn't able to clear the fault and that's why he's now driven two or three hours down to me see if i can sort it out let's have a look okay i'm going to use the launch uk euro tab 3 scan tool get in here intelligent diagnose Got a weather warning out today it's been terrible the weather so just wait for this to load up diagnostic now the customer did send me some screenshots of of uh, the diagnostics that he had done at the other garage now i'll give you a mention about that is most customers what they do with, with this situation is they'll say to me um, can I just have the DPF clean done? I don't want to pay for diagnostics because I've already got the diagnostics here. I've showed you a fault code is not diagnostics. Um, so he sent me a code, two codes P2463 and a P246C. Um, it looked like it was on a very, very basic scanner, so there may be other codes that that scanner did not pick up. And on top of that, I've just got to do my own tests to make sure, for starters, that the DPF looks like it's worth cleaning. And the next step is to make sure that there isn't. Other, there's many many other issues that you could, that you could have with the DPS so the, the pressure pipe could be blocked uh, for instance that you, it's not going to pick up on a, on a scan uh, so I've got this here ready now we're going to hit high speed scan and see what faults that it's going to pick up here yeah so like I said there's many many other faults um, and when people say to me I've already got the diagnostics here it's a fault code it's not diagnostics I still need to go and physically check stuff so no we can't um, drop off the diagnostic fee unfortunately sorry about that okay so we're still running through here at the minute we're almost done but it looks like we have three codes not two he said he had two codes but it looks like we had three now let's see what these are first left corner lamp missing communication with the parking assistance okay Particle filter restriction, accumulation bank 1, particle filter restriction, P246C, yep, those two codes he gave me, now we've got one here, sensor circuit A range performance, that wasn't there um, on the code he sent me, so there you go, exactly what I've just said has proved me right there, now let's go in and have a look, so I've just got the customers here, they're just standing around waiting for me to do this, um, Come on, it's usually faster than this. It depends what car it's on, I suppose. Uh, I'm gonna go to data stream. Okay, so we've got a pressure sensor circuit issue that wasn't mentioned. I'm not sure why. Let's have a look. Uh, inlet pressure on these is what it's called. Diesel inlet pressure. And we're gonna go to soot as well. Just to show you, basically, the soot doesn't really make much difference to me. One, two, three. 220% and we've got a DPF for 247 millibars of pressure let's hold that up to 3000 rpm oh, it's very sensitive it doesn't want to go up slowly just over 400 at 3000 rpm ok 
okay one two three we've got all of those working uh, we've got 222 percent right DPF so we've got a sensor circuit issue with the DPF so let's turn the ignition off ignition on okay so we've still got a reading from the DPF pressure sensor which is probably why we have a circuit issue there now that's reading incorrectly, very incorrectly, as I can see there. Let's go and try something. Special functions. Let's try and try and calibrate the sensor. Where is the option for us? Let me see now. Particle filter pressure sensor. And yes. Okay, so we'll let that program in failed to gain security access oh, so Ford have locked it out looks like I might not be able to do that I hate I hate some of these newer cars that they just keep doing this security security lockout systems on them uh, right sometimes what these can do though this I've seen in some cases with this diagnostic machine where it says it didn't work but then you go back in and it has actually worked, even though it's saying it hasn't. Let's have a look at that. No, we've still got 220 millibars. Right, so I think I've got some of these sensors in the van, so we'll go and get one out and have a look. Okay, so we have the sensor just here. Let's go and see if I've got one in the van. Could have sworn I had at least five or six of these. Uh, no, that's GM. Can't seem to find them. I thought I had loads of these in here. Aha, uh -huh, did I have got one I've got one here. I must have used all the rest of them. Uh must must have forgot, but yeah, I've got a brand new one here, complete with a new hose. So we'll uh test this one out. So first we'll use a little pick tool to open the sensor plug. Then some pliers here to get this clamp off. Take a bit of wiggling, get that down. Now we'll check the pins, see if we've got our lives and negatives here at the at the sensor, at the plug. Five volts, yes. And then we'll do a continuity test for the uh, negative. Yep. So that shows me that the plug is working. Uh, so must have a dodgy sensor okay plug the new sensor in we're a lot better but it's still not perfect is it we might need to calibrate this in but it's not allowing me to do that um one other thing i can say is i don't think i'm not sure but i don't know if this is a genuine sensor i can't remember it's been in there so long i've usually got a bunch of these sensors i can't seem to find them right now well, we seem to have a much better reading here still now, even though it's still quite high. Let's give that a minute and see if it adjusts anyway. Okay, now for a minute, we're going to try and clear these. See if that will get rid of the, the particle sensor uh, fault at the moment. And then we'll go back to data stream and we'll get all of these items back up again. Inlet pressure and soot. Yeah, we've still got a 63 reading, which is. I think this might need a software update from Ford, maybe. I just noticed that the engine coolant temperature isn't reaching the middle. I didn't notice that before, but I'm just trying to see if we can get it up to temperature. Has just driven down from. Where did you come from? London. London. So it should already be hot. Okay, we're going to get some of this cleaning solution ready. We're going to try and see if we can get the pressure down in the DPF and then see. Hopefully, these soot loadings are just going to come down automatically after we've done it. So we may not need to do the reset. We've got this connected up to the sensor. Can inject this fluid in with the engine running. DPF sits a bit high on these. Just going to hold the trigger here. Okay, 
now that I've put the fluid in, hold the revs up for a few minutes, the temperature has come up, but I do think there is an issue with that because as you're driving it, the temperature seemed to go down. Okay, I'm holding the revs here, we can see that these readings are coming down. So we just have to wait until that comes down and then the lights should go out. Okay, we've run away and got a new replacement genuine Ford sensor. So now I've got that fitted, we're going to go back inside and check the data. Okay, we now need to reconnect this because it's uh, obviously lost connectivity where we had to get the part there. 138 pound there, forward charge for that. Seems like these sensors are getting more expensive every day. Okay, so that seems to have cured that. So now let's start the vehicle up see where we have our pressure no it hasn't sorted it because now we have no reading uh, we did, oh, we're losing connectivity on the scan tool for some reason that's why let's try that again reconnect what happened to my I think I've knocked it with my leg down there let's try that again Twenty-three millibars. Let's turn the engine off. Yes, that's perfect. Okay, so the genuine four sensor obviously works a lot better here with this. Now if I just hold the revs for a few minutes, this should come down. Looks like the uh, DPF is going to work correctly now. So we can see now that these numbers are just rapidly coming down, they're coming down a lot quicker. And in regards to the pressure on these, I'm going to need to do some sort of research because I don't know where the pressure should be in this because it is a little bit different. This is not a differential pressure sensor, it's a particle filter inlet pressure. So it's reading the pressure from the DPF which is very close to the turbo and close to basically the whole combustion that goes through the exhaust is reading that it's not reading the differential pressure so the difference between the front and rear of the exhaust um, it's a little bit of a different sensor so it's gonna read higher I think than normal but as long as these soot loading um, numbers come down this percentage if that comes down within a good area then you know the DPF is in a, in a good range because these are calculated by the pressure so if these come down to a nice nice number then we know the pressure is in a good range as you can see now we're already in the red uh, has come away so we're already down in the green area or blue in this case now let's see because we can't seem to reset the DPF values but let's see if now these codes will clear Now that we have uh, now that we have the DPF down in, in below 100, but I might need to go below 50 before these will clear. So let's try it below 100 and see what happens. Now they might clear, but obviously if they come immediately back, we'll hold the ribs back up. Let's see if they've come immediately back or not. So we've still got the service exhaust over limit, and the codes are still there. So let's go back to the live data and watch it until it goes below 50 and then we'll see what happens and the soot so you can see one of these soot numbers is locked in but I think that will just correct itself maybe after a couple of drive cycles okay so we've still got the message there over limit even though we have come down to 44% here on the DPF but obviously this one here the uh, open loop one is locked in and we are having some issues trying to reset that I'm gonna try a different brand of scan tool see if that allows me to do it okay so I've got an array of different tools we're trying gonna try a few different ones and see which one works so this tool here doesn't seem to be even recognizing the van so I've got to manually type in the chassis number see if that'll work 
No, so this is not working whatsoever. Okay, I'm just going to a manual. Let me see if I can do it like this. Just doesn't want to recognize at all this uh, this tool. Okay, we're in. Let's try reset the particle filter values. So if I had to manually go in, it won't recognize the VIN number. No, it's not communicating. Um, it doesn't look like there's anything else. So it's not a good tool for the for the Ford Transit. This one, Autofix D1. It doesn't seem to want to connect whatsoever for anything. Okay, so next tool is the snap-on. Let's try this. Okay, so we're here so far. We're going to re try and reset the DPF values. Fail to start a security link session. Uh, same, so I've got the same issue. Going to try that again. Make sure we're connected to the internet. No up-to-date software. It is up-to-date. So it's just the online security stuff. And I haven't got a way around that I don't think so yeah I had this issue before with a Ford and when the customer drove away uh, the next morning the light and this exhaust filter sort of uh, service light just vanished on its own so maybe a couple of drive cycles might do it but other than that it's gonna need to go to someone who's got security access from Ford which I don't have at the moment unfortunately Okay, so that's a shame because I've got all of the system working but we just can't do the resets but I'm gonna try and have to find a way around that for future otherwise I'll be out of a job um, I'm gonna see more of these vans in the future I suppose so I'll see you on the next video